to we're streaming with a number of wonderful organizations today. And have some we're gonna have some wonderful music for you. So uh, we'd like to introduce Christian Bold, who's gonna be your MC for today. Thank you so much. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. So we've got a group of very anointed musicians. Uh, Annoying? Annoying. It, that too. <laughs> that too. And uh, we're excited, of course, to be streaming across the country. Um, I just want to mention for a moment the, the particular groups that we have. We've got the Tri-State Jazz Society of the Greater Philadelphia Area, uh, Queen City Jazz Society, Buffalo, New York, Basin Street Regulars of Pismo Beach in California, and of course, the Potomac River Jazz Club celebrating their 50th anniversary, so congratulations to them. Uh, but of Gibson, like I said, y'all are very anointed musicians. I got respect for everybody up on the stage. Everybody's got a great voice. Everybody's got great energy. So I'm gonna stop talking and just let the music talk. Thank y'all so much. And stay tuned for a Q&A with Miss Gibson later on. Enjoy. <laughs> Now won't you listen, dearie, why I say How can you tell me that you're going away? Don't say that we must part Don't break my aching heart You know I've loved you truly Many years, loved you night and day So how can you leave me? Can't you see my tears? Listen while I say, oh baby, after you've gone and left me crying, after you've gone, there's no denying that you'll feel blue and you'll feel sad. You'll miss the bestest pal you ever had. And there'll come a time, don't forget There'll come a time when you'll regret it someday. When you've grown lonely, your heart will ache like mine. You'll want me only after you've gone, after you've gone. the piano.
there's Mark Brooks on the bass. Goodness. Well, welcome to our live stream performance. We are here at the Jazz Museum, located in the old New Orleans Mint. We're on the third floor up here in the performance venue with no chairs, and we're continuing with the protocol here. There's no audience, but we seem to have had a couple of people that have straggled in not knowing what they were getting into, so <laughs> apologies in advance. Yes, thank you. I figured it out, though. What? Oh, you straggled in. You figured it out. That's right. Oh, my gosh. Well, anyway, we so appreciate you uh, showing up on a live stream. Oh, Bill Jensen, get out of your pajamas. Put some clothes on. Oh, my gosh. Everybody that's out there, it's any young man. Hey, I'm in the porch belt. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, I'll tell you what. Right, uh, right about now, let's, let's introduce the band, shall we? So over on the piano, say hello to Steve Pistorius, who is going to be... Uh, playing for us today. We go back a long ways. But Steve, actually, since the pandemic, you, you started doing porch concerts, right? Yeah. yeah. Every since last August. Since last August. One a week, usually. One a week. Yeah. It's like vitamins. <laughs> it's really kept us going during the pandemic. It's been good for the musicians. People come sit in the driveway, sit in the front yard. Yeah, they used to just come and, <laughs> and hang out and, <laughs> and scream at you. Now they actually come and hear music. That's so. right, that's right. I love it. And uh, at S at Steve is uh, a New, Order, New Orleans native born, yeah. born and bred. And uh, on the string bass back there is Mark Brooks, who's also a New Orleans born and bred. And ironically, I knew the rest of your family before I knew you. I knew Juanita, a wonderful singer in Detroit. And then we finally met. Later in the food chain of, the, of everybody. <laughs> And then back there on the drums, uh, another New Orleans legend, and that is Gerald French. But and two, I worked with I worked with your dad, and I worked with Bob. Yeah, your, my uncle. Your yeah. uncle. And I'm then a, I'm, I'm a legend in my own mind. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I bought into it. A long yeah, yeah, you see, a long time ago, a long time. Hook, line, and sinker. Because yeah. uh, Gerald's your your um, let's see, so your grandfather took over from Papa Celestine. Right, in 1955. And yeah. then my Uncle Bob took over the original Tuxedo Jazz Band in 1976. And? And then now I'm the leader. I, took over, so I took over in uh, 2011, yeah. Wow, that yeah. is amazing. Yeah. So congratulations. Yeah. So the band, the band will be 111 years old this <laughs> year. And doesn't look a day over. No, 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 no. Not, not a day over amazing? 51. It really is. It's just <laughs> so incredible. And uh, on the trumpet, Charlie moved to New Orleans, I think, in 1980, right? 1980. 1980, and we started working together back then. And you're from upstate New York. No, I'm from uh, Long Island. Long Island? Oh, I oh, thought you were. Brooklyn, South Brooklyn. Really? Were you born? I didn't know that. I got that southern accent. Oh, it's because you went to college uh, upstate New York. Yeah. You went to Cortland or Skinny Atlas, or where'd you go? Where are you going? Fredonia. <laughs> hail, hail, Fredonia. And uh, and if we haven't met before, I'm Bonu Gibson, 
And that is my real name. Banu is my real first name. I didn't make it up. It's on the birth certificate. Uh, and we could talk about that over drinks sometime if we uh, <laughs> need to find out any more about it. But just to bring everybody up on a little bit of news over the past couple of years, I have been writing an autobiography slash memoir with all these incredible stories in it. So it's going to be re really... No, you're what? not, what? not going to tell that. Psst. No? Psst. No? Psst. Oh, okay. We, we need uh, we to talk. Yes, okay. We can, we can negotiate over that amount. Okay, we'll talk. Okay. I have a layaway play. Well, I used to have a layaway play. I don't want to make that book. I'm serious. <laughs> I'm, I'm very serious. Okay. Well, we can, we, can, we can talk about stuff that can come out. But I, as I was writing it, I was trying to figure out how I got into singing this music. And I realized it happened one day when I was about 16 and I was driving in my Ford baby blue Fairlane convertible. Yeah, it was really something. And this song came on the radio. I thought it was the greatest song I'd ever heard. Fats Waller was singing it. It was filled with joy, enthusiasm. I was really hooked. Yes, no one to talk with. I'm all by myself. No one to walk with. I'm happy on the shelf. A miss for heaven. Saving all my love for you. Yes, only you. I know for certain the one that I love. I'm too with flirt lights, just you. I'm thinking of a misbehaving, saving my love for you. I'm like Jack Horner in a corner. Don't go nowhere. What do I care? Your kisses are worth waiting for. Believe me. I don't stay out late, I don't care to go. I'm home about eight, it's just me and my radio ain't misbehaving. Saving all my love for you. Oh, tell me about it, Steve. Yes, there's no one to walk with all by myself. No one to talk with. I'm happy on the shelf. I ain't miss my heaven. Seven on my love just for you. Yeah, I know for certain the one that I love. I'm through with flirting. Yes, it's just you I'm thinking of. Ain't miss my heaven. I'm saving all my love for you. Thank you all. That's Waller. <laughs> Terrific. Well, um, in 19, no, it was in 2009, uh, Nita Hemeter, Leslie Cooper, and I decided that we should get together and form a jazz camp where we helped to 
promote and teach people from around the world how to play New Orleans jazz. And 2010 was our first year that we got together and did it. And everybody you see up here is on the faculty. And uh, along with, I counted the other day, I think we're 20, 24 people that are going to be there for camp. Um, takes a village. Um, anyway, <laughs> I, I've been missing. I, that's what's been missing this whole past pandemic. I don't have a drummer behind me giving me a put a boom every time yeah, I say yeah, something stupid, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. My vacuum cleaner won't answer me. So. It's, it's hilarious. It's hilarious. <laughs> a little something extra in there for you. Yeah, yeah, something yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, um, this is one of the songs. Most of the songs we're going to be doing this afternoon are all from uh, the jazz camp repertoire. And uh, this next one, are we doing Weary Blues? Weary Blues. So weary blues. I'm going to pick up the banjo for this one. So. Uh -oh. so yeah, everybody go get a drink if I'm playing the banjo. Uh-oh. Live fire, live fire. We're live fire now. Uh-oh. Not the banjo. Not the banjo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we can just say go. After I no, 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 that. don't do that. Don't do that. Come on, Charlie. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs>
right in the ear. Ouch, ouch. Oh my gosh, that was a bit brisk. Sorry, yeah, folks. I, I was like, I know, I know. We need hot <laughs> jazz, hot <laughs> jazz, hot <laughs> jazz while you're waiting. Hot jazz. Oh my goodness. Well, at least it's song about drinking, maybe. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. That's as close as we can get. And um, so I put I put my band together in 1981 <laughs> on April 1st. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Think about it. Um, 1981, and in the band was I Charlie. First, 1980, 1980, a year to the day. And Professor Pistorius was the, mm, in the band, in the, yeah. the first band that night. And things took off from there. And this is one of my favorite songs that Steve used to sing, uh, all about prohibition. You want to tell him about it? Yeah, this was written at the beginning of uh, a dark 13 years in American history where booze was illegal. It was, you think the pandemic was bad. <laughs> Try it, with, try it with no mm. booze. No booze, and believe me, I used to be a practitioner. Anyway, <laughs> but 1919, Albert von Tilzer wrote this song about uh, kind of about World War One and the lack of booze, called the Alcoholic Blues. Why, that's the name. That prohibition gonna drive me insane. I'm so thirsty, soon I'll die. I'm simply gonna evaporate. I'm just that dry. I wouldn't mind to live forever in a trench. Just if my daily thirst they'd only let me quench. And not with Bevo or ginger ale. I want real stuff by the pail. I got the blues, I got the blues, I got those alcoholic blues. No more beer, my heart to cheer. Goodbye whiskey, it used to make me frisky. So long highball, so long Jim. Please tell me when you're coming back again. I got the blues, I got the blues. Since they amputated all my booze. Lordy, lordy now, this is hell. You know I don't have to tell. Oh no, I've got those alcoholic blues.
we're going to continue on our substance, substance abuse section here with, <laughs> with this, uh, Gerald like that one. <laughs> Good. I have a motif. I have a theme. Topic. Yep. And uh, this is the one called Willie the Weeper. He had an addiction problem also, but his was quite substantial. Moves you come in. If it doesn't, yeah, well, anyway, stay out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you all the story, folks. So Willie the Weeper, Willie was a low down chimney sweeper. He had the habit, had it bad. Gonna tell you all about the dreams he had. Dreamed he had a bear and diamond wings of money. Women by the score to love and call him honey. Everybody that he knew, they would say, There's the guy that put the bee. And old Broadway now tell me What would you do If all your dreams, dear That would come true Yeah, that something tells me You'd lock the door Just like Willie the Weeper Yeah, you'd scream for more Tell them, Charlie bum, bum, bum. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. There's, there's a program we can all sign ourselves up for after that song. <laughs> Back <laughs> when we were working at uh, Bayard's Jazz Alley on Bourbon Street, back in the 1980s. Charlie started singing this next song. I think you started singing at Bayard's. Or was it when we went to Mahogany Hall? Did it come in early? No, I sang it. Even before? Even before in, a, in the crib? Even before. It was, I sang it in my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I heard it. I heard it in my dreams. Anyway, Charlie's going to sing Mama's Gone Goodbye.
a while. Mama's gone goodbye. No use to cry. No use to sigh. Four years to dog me round. Now's the time to let you know what's on my mind. I'm going away. Don't ask me to stay. Fairly well. I've been to school. But it's a brand new rule. And I ain't no fool. Now I got a gal. Treats me right. Mama stays home almost every night. So fairly well. Mama's gone goodbye. Katie Cavera, if you're out there, you know what strings do after they sit around forever and they get all kind of mushy and weird? That was weird. I mean, I even clean, never mind. <laughs> Back to what you were doing. That, that's all right. Uh, but boy, that was. <laughs> really? Oh, um, another song that we, is from uh, camp. And what year was this? Uh, it was, oh, it doesn't say. Yeah, yeah, but I meant what year of camp this was. 1928. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good year. That was a very good year. Uh, but anyway, this is a song we, we dedicated to all of the campers that are out there missing Louisiana. Larry Garrett, it's too early to drink, but I know you're having one anyway if you're having to watch this. Five o'clock somewhere. Five o'clock somewhere, that's right. Um, and uh, so we dedicate this to all of you campers out there. This is Louisiana, which will be here pretty soon. My heart is heavy to see the levee, a field of cane and corn. I've not forgotten my land of cotton down where I was born. Why I'm through knocking around, cause I'm Dixie bound. Louisiana, Louisiana, I've been sad, mighty sad. Louisiana, Louisiana, now I'm glad. So glad the rain is going, whistles blowing. Here I come, here I come. I'm through with running, back where I'm home and back to happiness. And then some Louisiana, no place is grander. I declare, I declare, Ooh, no skies are bluer, no. Are true or anywhere, anywhere, please take me to your heart. Give me one more star. I'm a little child, I just been running wild. Louisiana, Louisiana, my
come, please take me to your heart. Give me one more start. As a little child, just been running wild. Louisiana, Louisiana, my own. Yes. My goodness. Did you know this was happening? Miss Leslie Cooper just walked in. What? Oh, you sneaky, sneaky thing, you. Oh, my gosh. Sitting next to Joel Albert, who flew down here for punishment beyond the beyond. I don't know. Just, it sure is. So, anyway, Joel with uh, Albert with the Potomac River <coughs> Jazz Club had been nudging me for months to do this nudging and nudging and I hadn't been nudged in a long long time and it wasn't pleasant so uh, but he kept wanting to have this happen and said we should have part of the faculty and we can do this and uh, so finally I relented <laughs> and, and we we put this together and then he showed up here today you flew down from DC made it through TSA they obviously had no idea who you were Yep, yep, you got away, got away from D.C., that's true. So thank you so much. Leslie, gosh, it's good to see you. We've only seen each other like once in the year. We phoned. Wow, any requests? Uh, time's up. Oh, so sorry. Yeah, well, no, you got to go a little higher. got to go a little higher. That's right. It's time for Mark Brooks to sing for you. Another camp song. What year was this in camp? First year, I think. Was it? Does it say at the top? 20? 2010. 2010. No, it was from 2010. Yeah. Okay, so Mark, have at it. This is My Blue Heaven. Anything oh. special you want to say? Oh, not a whole lot. Just that this, this next tune is a song by the legendary Mr. Antoine Fetch Domino. Oh,
to my blue heaven. There'll be a smiling face, a fireplace, a cozy room, a little nest that nests where the roses bloom. Just the Molly and me and the baby agree. Okay, we are going to uh, have uh, Professor Pistorius sing another song for you right now. This is one of my favorite songs. I really like this one tune. One of mine too. But I'm ne I never, I've never sung it, so I, I always, you just hold the card on it, so it's like I'm, I'm oh, not going thanks. to. All right. <coughs> this is from the great New Orleans pianist Jelly Roll Morton. Who's a oh, that's my song. Thank yes. You. One of his later tunes from the late 1930s uh, called Sweet Substitute. Yes, I am aware I'm following Mark Brooks. <laughs> it's okay. I'm older now. I'm more confident. Okay, we're going to skip forward. We're going to fast forward. The boss says fast forward. You have to move. I, I, I'll, I'll talk. Yeah, Fat, Fast Domino actually did this one too, but the first time I ever heard this song uh, was in my early years of playing. I played it. Yeah, my youth. I, I was playing at Preservation Hall, and uh, my Uncle Bob didn't like playing with the older musicians. And he was in the band with Willie Humphrey, Percy Humphrey, Norvin Kimball, Jeanette Kimball, uh -huh. Frank Fields, and Worthy Thomas, showboy, on trombone. He didn't like that band. He wanted to play with Wendell and Freddie and, you know, his peers. He wanted to play with his peers. So he kept 
on Wednesday nights. Man, go, you, you working tonight? No, 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 really. <laughs> go make that gig. Go make that gig. So it got to the point, they hired me. So Percy, Percy was like, Risa, I like this boy. Play good drum. Hire him. So I started working with them. And I played with that band for four years until they all either retired or died off. Yeah, so that's how I got into the hall. I started playing at 21 years old, but I was playing in a band of 80 and 90 years old. And the old men beat me up. They really beat me up. <laughs> yeah, I, I was playing stuff I had no idea. I, you know, I knew some tunes, but I didn't know the tunes that they do. But it really increased my repertoire. And this was one of the tunes that Percy used to like to do. And this tune is entitled, When My Dream Boat Comes Home. A flat? Yeah. You, you all right, Paul? All right. Okay. All right, here we go. Right One. Oh. <laughs> 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 you know, I'm a drummer. I'm not supposed to know nothing about that. <laughs> One, two, ah, ah, ah. When my dream boat comes home, when my dream no more will roam, I will meet you and greet you, hold you closely in my arms. Moonlit waters will sing of that tender love you bring. We'll be sweethearts. Baby, forever, when my dream boat comes home, oh, when my dream boat comes home, when my dream no more will roam, I will meet you and greet you, hold you closely in my arms, holy waters will sing. Of that tender love you bring We'll be sweethearts, baby, forever In my dream boat
Can we work together? Yes. Swing town? Is yes. Yep. On purpose. On purpose. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Come on. Right across the street from the strip club. Yes. Yeah. 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 And that club only lasted a, just a couple of months before it went. Yes. Yeah. It belly up. Yep. It did. Almost all the places I worked with on Bourbon Street have now turned into restaurants. And I was talking to Connie Jones about it, and he said all the places that he worked at are now strip clubs. So I don't know. Hey. I would have thought it would have been the other way around, but uh, yeah. Pithy. Pithy indeed. Well, Charles, it's that time for you to sing again. Holy we're Lord. going back into our archives and finding a song that you sang when you were a tiny tot. Yeah, well that's the year we did it at camp. <laughs> the problem is they go they go this way. Oh, no that's, that's the thing, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So are you in voice Winstead? Mess it up with you? No. Okay, you guys told mine anyway. <laughs> it's all yours. Hey, keep it down out there, will you? Gee whiz, it's kind of work up here. <laughs> okay. Okay. One more dish. around with me it's fancy letting I'm petting I'm getting Tennessee I've advertised in that Memphis press for 
14 mama said, yes, yes, yes. Bill Street mama, come back home. Here's one we haven't done in, in a long time. We used to close close off the Bourbon sets Bourbon. back on Bourbon Street. Hmm? <laughs> baby, <laughs> not body. Oh, Everybody oh, looked oh, like oh, ba oh, baby. Oh. Well, you just might say that. We used to get our symphony music back with titles changed like that. They would they would change it. Slap that bass became the the, the B magically disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. I know <laughs> they thought they thought jazz musicians were lowbrow, huh? I think they have more fun. Do they? Be before we leave, let's have a let's have a home uh, at home like woohoo for Steve Astorius on the piano, yay! Mark Brooks on the string bass, the incredible Gerald French over there on the drums, woohoo, woohoo! Charlie Fardella, wee! Banu Gibson, where'd she go? And thank you guys for sticking around. Thank you, Joel, for, he's got a camera. Oh, God, he's got a camera. Uh, for putting this all together, you will pay. There are consequences for actions like this. Um, so we're going to do Everybody Loves My Baby. Sure we are. Sure we are. Why not? Why not? <laughs> uh, are you dancing me in? Why not? Well, do whatever you want. And everything, why I'm just like a bird in spring. Got to let it go. Why it's my sweetie, can't you guess? Wild about him, I'll confess. Don't you love me? Oh my yes, and that's just why I shout that everybody loves my baby. Oh my baby, don't love nobody but me. Nobody but me. Everybody wants my baby, my baby don't want nobody but me. That's plain to see, yeah. Got foam like Venus, sun and star, and talking Greek. No one can come between us. I'm a Sheba, he's my sheep. Everybody loves my baby, but my baby don't love nobody but me. Nobody but me. Thanks for spending an hour with us. This has been swell, Isabel. Thanks, Joel. Thanks to the jazz societies and clubs that helped make this all possible. 
And thank you guys for listening in the afternoon on a Saturday here. Okay, thank you. Bye. Banu, we still got some questions for you yeah. from your loyal followers. Yeah, we're going to do it here. Yeah, y'all can get out of here, man. Go. Go away. I had a big old list. <laughs> and it got lost in translation. <laughs> Truly, y'all are incredible. Thank you so much. Uh, So, Ms. Gibson, yep. we got a few broad questions for you. A few broad questions. They're, they're, they're big questions. They're big questions. And uh, I guess I'll just start from the top. And, and this is a question I, I need to learn. I need to answer for myself, too, because I don't even remember. Uh, when did you first know you wanted to be in show business? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, very early on, I guess. Very, er very yeah, early Yeah, maybe on. I started dance lessons when I was three, so oh. probably four. So this is <laughs> what you are. This is yes, just absolutely. always what you've been. Yes. No, no question at all. No, I knew I would do something in show business. I something. didn't know exactly know what it was going to be, but I knew it was going to be this because I liked it. See, I, I saw Transformers. Really? And that it made me want to be a movie director. Really? I wanted like attention. And then I realized I could sing. I was like, all right, I'm going to keep it that <laughs> way. That's good. Okay, so what was your first, oh, yeah, this is definitely an internet question. Uh, what was your first professional gig? Like, look how they profe that spell professional. Proffle. What was your first First proffle gig. I can tell you my first proffle gig. What was your gig. first professional gig like? Do you remember your first yeah, professional gig? Yeah, um, I was 12 years old and I got $10. Uh -huh. I mean, if it's professional, it means you got paid for it. Yeah. I had a lot of gigs before. First professional one, I got paid $10, $10 for dancing. Hollywood, Florida, okay. something called uh, Hollywood Under the Stars, and it was a, a portable wagon that they put spikes down so it wouldn't move, but it still did. So trying to dance on that was <laughs> definitely a challenge. Yeah, it had like some uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. and Shaolin monk oh, yeah. situation oh, yeah, going yeah. on. I was, I was doing some <laughs> interesting dance moves that weren't <laughs> in the choreography. There was a, and the, the lights used to blow out. It was really, yeah, it was really high end. Hey. Yeah. But you made it Ten happen. Ten bucks. That was a lot back yeah. in 1903. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, from, hey, three. hey, you, you missed it. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, if they're that bad, I'm not getting a put them pen, huh? Okay. All right. They, oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right. Uh, okay. At what point in your career... Did you decide that you wanted to lead a band versus just being a member of the crew? Oh, we do not have enough time. Um, the, we do. Um, actually, it happened when I, I got really sick of being the incidental vocalist, and I was working with a band, and I was on Bourbon Street, and it was an early shift, and I, they, they played uh, about three numbers to warm up, and then the band leader said to me, okay, Banu, get on stage, bring them in. And so... I, what? Okay. And I got up, I started singing. Place got about three quarters full, and he said, okay, go sit down. We got it. And that's when I said, oh, no, no, no. This is going to change. Yeah. And that's uh, then later, uh, just a few months after that, Eddie Bayard was looking to put a new band together, and he said, either I'm going to put a band together and you can be the vocalist, or why don't you put a b together a band? And I said, yes, I will do that. And everything changed the minute I took control yeah. of my situation. Yeah. Now, I have a question. What do you yeah. mean by incidental vocalist? I can... Incidental vocalist is the vocalist where, number one, you, you're brought up for a couple of tunes and then you go away. Uh, it's like the 1940s yeah. where they had the little chair over there and they, you sit on the side and then the band plays two or three choruses yeah. and then you casually stroll up and the band modulates to your key and you sing, I'm getting sentimental. <laughs> and then you finish your chorus and you go sit down. That's incidental. Uh, I didn't like incidental. Yeah. No. We're, not, we're not ornaments. No. Ooh, yeah. I like that. Nuh -uh. um, I've been hanging out on, a, on, you know, hang out to dry a couple of times, but yeah, no ornaments. 
Okay, never mind. <laughs> this next question, I'm gonna just shut up because I'm a man, and I'm gonna let you take this one. Did being a woman help or hinder you as you established your career? Yes, both. Both. Absolutely. Yeah, both. It's um, it's it's very difficult because you are. Um, it's the same. It's the same in any business for anything that you've been hearing about, with uh, trying to make you know to to crash into a field where everybody else is it's male dominated. So um, that's hard. Um, and then some. But sometimes it's easier to. Um, I was. I. Uh, <laughs> Am I going to say any of this stuff? Am I really? You remember the part that it was? No. Um, I said when I was writing in this memoir thing and realizing certain things that I got by uh, on charm and a foul mouth. Mm -hmm. So I would, like, my example of this was I was working with a band that they didn't know me and they hated having a incidental chick vocalist show up on the gig. And you have to make friends with the band and let them know that you know, you're not a threat and you know, we're gonna have a good time. And one of the guys in the band, figuring he was gonna try to be nice, picked up my microphone and said, where would you like me to put this? And I said, do you really wanna know? And then from that moment on, we were great friends. The band <laughs> liked me. <laughs> yeah, yeah right? Icebreaker, yeah. you know, combination of, you know. Do it. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. And we got along great for the yeah. rest of the gig. They thought that was just swell. <laughs> that worked for me. <laughs> okay, best gig. Oh. Uh, it's a toss-up between probably the Hollywood Bowl. Okay. I'd say maybe we did the Millennium with the Boston Pops, which gave us the best bragging rights, yeah. but the best gig was the Hollywood Bowl. And when was that? 1994. Wow. Were you born? I was two. Oh. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. I hate when that happens. Don't you just hate when that happens? December oh, 1992. Oh. So I might have been one. Could you hear me? I sang loud. Probably. <laughs> I've always had a good ear. Worst gig? Uh, too many. Too, too many? many? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, one of them one of them was when I was working with the World's Fair band and they took us up to Tickfall, Louisiana. They promised us, you know, world travel and everything. You know, we were the World's Fair musical ambassadors and we thought, okay, so, and you're gonna tour and you're gonna do this. And so we ended up in Tickfall, Louisiana. I was changing my clothes in uh, one of those outdoor bath things with like five toilets and two feet of water and I said that's it no that was one of them I could we could be here for a long time you could write, write a book on it you could write a book on it oh yeah, yeah uh, and I hope hey. you include some of those in hey. the book man. right that sounds squalid I'm sorry it was okay yeah. so speaking of the book is there any kind of sneak preview or tease from this soon to be Amazon what's well, the mine uh, what look, uh, what a story or what? Yeah, yeah. I mean, any, anything. <laughs> anything. <laughs> you caught me off guard I, with that. Uh, oh, oh, goody. <laughs> I haven't been out in a year. You realize this is just like, you know, it's all pent it's up. pouring out of you. Yeah, yeah I'm trying up, to stay right? away from you, but, you know. <laughs> um, I don't care about oh. the age difference. Um, <laughs> and I'm not, you know, this is terrible. Can we wrap this up? Who thought this was a good idea? <laughs> this is not Joe, a good idea. Joe this is not a good idea. We all grown. Yeah. I don't know. I, there's, um, I would, there's just amusing stories. And, and uh, no. <laughs> no. No. No, I'm not going there. No previews, as nope. all my band leaders would say. No previews. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, but it spans your life, right? Like it well, yeah. W what happened was I, it turned out to be uh, a million anecdotes about um, the crazy, wacky guys I toured with and just being a female in the business. But uh, after I gave it to somebody else to look over, they told me that it was just sort of like randomly all strung together and I didn't have a theme. And so I am looking for a theme. And since I couldn't find a theme, I knew I didn't have one. So I am now reconfiguring things and it's now coming together. It's actually, um, uh, now that I'm sort of have all the puzzle pieces out there, I'm reassembling them and, and it's kind of good. So it, it talks about being a woman, trying to make it in the business. It talks about being attracted to this music. Also, um, I write in the, this one whole section about um, stage fright and how I don't have any, which is interesting. Right. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so. I'm definitely envious of why that of happened. You. I've been playing for years now, I still. We'll talk. Yeah. I got, 
I got I got ways around it. Cool. Excellent. Um, did you have a role model? Um, wow. Uh, a lot of them and, and no. Um, what I did was, <coughs> I think I just tried to assimilate a, dot a lot of different singers and, and since I started out as a dancer, I was sort of like in that field and then uh, just I watched all performers, so it's like you just watch everybody, and I assimilated all of it, and then I came out. Now I have, you know, certain like I loved listening to Bessie Smith and Ethel Waters. Um, when I was young, I could imitate Barbra Streisand and stuff like that, but <coughs> not one, not not one that I'd say, oh yeah, that that was the person. Oh, what maybe Fred Astaire. Okay, I like yeah. Fred Astaire. What about like maybe I instead of a role model, perhaps like a mentor or someone who no, you'd like to? No, I didn't no? have any mentors. Wow. No, I had a lot of um, I had a lot of influential um, musicians and people like that, but nobody that took me really took me under their wing and said, "Hey, kid." Well, I mean, I did have a couple of those, <laughs> but well, we we didn't go there. I, but the original first line of the book that I was writing was, "I decided not to sleep my way to the top." And you can see how well that worked out. <laughs> you got to maintain your Thank integrity. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> got to have a bass drum on that. Thank you. You got to maintain your integrity and your virtue, you know? Yep. Um, You're still young. Don't worry. There's time to fall. <laughs> yeah. Um, but oh, Speaking of young people, besides practice, mm -hmm. what advice would you give a young person trying to establish themselves in a music with a music career today? Uh, today. Today, everything's changing today. So it's... Wow, everything's uh, completely different. Um, I'd say get to as many older, established people that are willing to share as you can and just pick their brain like crazy. Just uh, get in there. The most successful people that I know um, that have been very successful have sought out either their elders or people, anybody they can get to, and just bug the hell out of them and ask them, how did that happen? How'd you get there? Because it's a big circle. It all comes back. And everything, it's like level or blinds. You know, when I grew up, they used to be big and fat, and then they got the little skinny ones, and now they're back to the big and fat. You know, if they got big and fat, now go find the people that know about the skinny levelers and go ask them about that. Yeah, I mean, you got to be in the room. You gotta mm -hmm. be in the room with Absolute. these cats. You know, room it's, it's where really it happens. <laughs> it's really no way around it. Um, has current technology altered opportunities for musicians? Absolutely. It, oh, you don't yeah. even have to finish that yeah. one. Like Do you consider this to be positive or negative developments? Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, it's both. So, yeah, it's it's like, yeah. So, well, I guess maybe I, I'll add to this. W what's one or two standout things that you find to be different between when you were coming up and now? The uh, access to stuff that you could never find. Before, if I was looking for an old tune, I had to find a collector. I had to find a maven that was all into something. I had to find a friend of a friend of a friend who maybe knew a guy who had the original sheet music. You had to, I mean, months. Question. Yeah, and now you're just like, and there it is. You just Google it, and it, it pops up. So it's um, there's a there's a lot more out there that that anybody that's younger can just go through every single one of Louis Armstrong's recordings if they just sit down and Bessie's recordings. Everything is out there. It, it, this could be a yes or no answer or, or not. But do you think there's something <coughs> to that quest? You know what I'm saying? Like having to go and do all of that work to find an old tune, versus being able to just pull up my phone and hear the song. Yes. Uh, yes, but but um, uh, if it diminishes the drive, yes. But for the most part, if you want it, it's it's easier to yeah. to if it's the passion to find the knowledge that's out there. So it just uh, if you have to slow down the process, I don't think that that really helps you. You know, you you need to get there. So you just need to be thankful that you can access that stuff really fast. Yeah. Uh. Does the separation from your audience in a live stream affect the way you perform? Sure. Sure. Yeah. It's it's what's weird. It's like uh, this is a strange mix because we do have a couple of people out there. So you try not to necessarily play to the audience, but you can't help it. Um, 
but you can't tell me, and I watch some live streams, and so of you, you know what you're doing while you're live streaming. You know, you're going out and getting a candy bar or something out of the refrigerator, you're drinking or, you know. It's so, so it's like, it's hard to have that constant interaction. If you're, uh, there's a couple of people that I watch their live streams, and because I know them, I'm really connected to it, and I'm, it's kind of funny when they sit and they talk or, you know, they chit chat. Um, other ones, it's just annoying, you know. It's like, am I watching a, Watching you, you know, defrost your refrigerator. Or are you going to do yeah, something yeah. here? You know, so yeah, for sure, you got to have a program if you're going to do that. Yeah. yeah. Um. Oh, another very big question. How did the pandemic affect you? <laughs> Adversely, positively. I didn't get a hug for over a year. Uh, yeah. I was hugging my vacuum cleaner. It was the <laughs> only thing that was upright. <laughs> all right, now we woke up. Huh? Okay, we all grown, <laughs> but y'all got to keep it together, man. <laughs> y'all got to keep it together back there. I, I, I'm um, singing. I mean, I was going to have to sign half of this. I mean, I haven't sung in a year. It's like, you know, ha, ha, ha. I mean, I feel like alfalfa. And in spite of the fact of trying to warm up and vocalize and, you know, there's not, there, it's hard to get any motivation to do that on your own. I mean, I've been trying, but... Um, Connie Jones used to say, just um, practicing skills in, in your basement is not the same as working on a gig. So that's that's true. Yes, indeed. Um, you got a lot of those. Well, we had the last one, so oh, okay. I'm going to let you go soon. That's okay. I enjoy talking to you. Uh, You're yeah. nice. This is yeah. nice. Lots of times I get really goofy people that interview, <laughs> and, you know, it's like, what's your favorite color? I <laughs> mean. <laughs> Do you I like peanut butter? I could ask you that, too. I mean. <laughs> Um, crunchy or, or, or <laughs> green? Green. <laughs> oh, my favorite color. <laughs> <laughs> okay, your favorite color is green, but yep. you like crunchy or creamy peanut butter? Oh, creamy. I can't, I can't take the crunchy. I'm sorry. And you're a crunchy guy, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that would be good. I can, you can eat all the crunchy and I can eat all the smooth. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> we, need, we need, we need a bar real yeah, quick, real. don't we? Yeah. For real. Yeah, we yeah, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Tell me about the jazz camp experience. Do you have to be a good player to participate? No, you have to have a passion okay. for, for playing. That's what we're looking for. I, my, I, my joke is just, uh, do you know which end of the horn to blow in? That's where I start. That's my go-to joke at I the beginning need of it. I some help with that. <laughs> but um, uh, yes, you have to have a basic proficiency. We do not take beginners. But we like classical players that come in and have an interest in learning what's the difference and how do you play jazz. Um, we have uh, scholarship kids that come in high school and uh, college that are good players, but nobody teaches early jazz anymore. Everybody starts at bebop, you know? And it's like, uh, it j it's just the way things are right now, which is not good, you know? If you don't know this, and it's like, w we talked with Gerald too about, and, and Steve about learning this New Orleans groove that happens, and um, you don't get that when you play. I think that most bebop is very vertical playing, uh -huh. and this is very yeah. horizontal playing. You have to, it's melodic. You have to have a melody, you have to know the, where the melody is going, as opposed to like running scales and just, yeah. you know what I mean? That just, just gives me a headache. There does seem to be kind of a, a issue now where melody is not as strong mm -hmm. as it could be, yep. I feel sometimes, the more contemporary music, you know? It's more of a challenge, too. You know, it's easy to run scales, yeah. and it's not easy to take a given melody and reinvent it. Yeah, right. And, and amen. You gotta, I, you gotta be creative. You gotta be creative. And uh, 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 Charlie Hallam was telling me, he was talking to some guys that were saying, and I thought he was pulling my leg for a saying, saying uh, talking to some more contemporary players, saying, oh, oh, I can't play that stuff. And then I thought, well, you're joking around right there, just pulling your legs. He says, no, no, he says, they just think differently. They're thinking just in a different way of approaching um, the structure of a song. So they're, again, thinking more vertically and playing, da -da -da -da, you know, that way as opposed to taking something and, and uh, like, dissecting the melody and then yeah. giving it back to you in a different way. And that you still hear it. It's like, well, here's the original melody, but here's my take on this melody, and I'm gonna improvise, and you're gonna, I'm gonna knock your socks off. So. Incredible. Well, Miss Gibson, I really appreciate you coming. Thank you. I really appreciate all you cats back there. <laughs> Thank y'all. We're gonna call it a show. Show. Sure.
Make sure y'all go to nolajazzmuseum.org. Hopefully we'll have her back on the calendar sooner than later. Oh, that's nice. I'm Christian Bowler, the New Orleans Jazz Museum. Thank y'all so much. Yay, Christian. Peace. <laughs>